Okay, now. I just started recording. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go just one by one with each guide. I'm going to change the form using the sculpt tool, the sculpt guide tool, to see if we can get close to a reference photo. We also don't have enough um, number of guides here. You can see that there is a huge area here that there isn't any guide. So I'm going to add more guides over there once I'm done with with the surrounding splines. I was wondering what kind of client was commissioning those portraits. You in this portrait? This is a personal work, this is not a commission. But if you mean in general, who would commission me to, for a, you know, 3D character, for a 3D likeness, it's usually game studios, video game developers, um, VFX studios. I've had a handful of clients who just wanted to have a 3D print of a celebrity or they just wanted a portrait, you know. Sometimes I get clients, private clients that they just want a 3D portrait. But it's usually for, I mean, the majority of my clients have been video game studios or metaverse studios yeah that sort of thing especially recently i've had so many clients for for the metaverse does that answer your question but this one is just a personal work, this is not a commission. Good. By the way guys, if um, you notice any choppiness during the stream or if you lose my voice, if the frame rate gets, you know, too choppy, just let me know so I can fix it. Yeah, you're welcome, Matthew. So I'm just trying to change the direction of the tips of these guides. When working on the hair of the character for games, do you use Yeti? No, I have never used Yeti. I only use X-Gen and I can just make any hairstyle you name using only X-Gen. I don't need any other, you know, third party plugin. I can just use X-Gen for anything and everything. But I've seen, you know, great works of other artists who have used Yeti. So I'm not yet I'm not saying Yeti is bad or anything. I just have never used it. The only hair tools I've used are Cinema 4D's hair system which is very old and outdated. 
And apart from that, I've only used XGen. Which is great. When I started using XGen, I just never looked back. It's very user friendly. I mean, there are bugs. There are sometimes, maybe more than just sometimes. You have crashes, you have, you might lose your work if you don't know how to properly save your project. But once you get the hang of it, I mean, it's a great tool. It's something that you can just use for everything, for every different type of hairstyle. So I'm just focusing on one side of the character's hair. So after I'm done with that, I'm just gonna delete this side, just mirror everything to the opposite side. It's to save time, because in 3D, when you're a 3D artist, time is the most important thing that you have to you have to manage, especially if you're, if you have a deadline, if you, sometimes I have, I've had crazy, you know, just, you know, a full character, just in less than a week. So I have to know tricks, you have to know shortcuts, sometimes to meet your deadlines. You, know, you have to be really good at managing your time. I'm a bit confused when it comes to hair in the games. I did hair cards using XGen, but XGen is very unstable, so I think to switch over to Yeti. I have no idea. For hair cards, um, I don't know how Yeti is better for hair cards. For, because for hair cards, you have to manually just convert your convert your hair to hair cards. It's a totally different process. My my understanding is that Yeti is also like Xgen is just for it's for grooming hair. It's not for is it for hair hair cards? I have no idea. I've never used Yeti. But there is a tool in XGen, in utilities, that you can, I don't remember where it was, they can use different techniques, yeah, I can find it right now, but you can use different techniques to just convert your XGen hair to hair cards. A hair cards is, um, a completely different workflow. I'm not talking about hair cards. I'm just talking about regular, old-fashioned hair grooming, you know, using a spline, using just real hair, real splines. And the version of versions of Unreal, I think, just accept. You can just export your um, your XGen as a Lambic format and you can just import it as it is the way it is into Unreal. Hello for those who are new to the stream. We're using XGen, we are Here's our reference photo. We are just trying to get as close as we can to the reference. Yeah, no problem. I'm not really uh, familiar with hair cards and any workflow. Maybe 
what you're saying is true. I have no idea. I've never used Yeti. Maybe you should uh, watch some of the artists on YouTube who use Yeti for their characters. Maybe that would get that would give you a better insight on what tool you should use. Okay, let's take a look how we are doing. Let's update our preview. Okay, before going any further, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on the on the region map because we have a part here. For this center part, I'm going to separate the right and left sections of the hair using a region map. Let me write a reference and then let me also save it. Before going to paint mode, when you're using Xtreme, always first save. I have so many crushes when I, when I just go to paint mode. Sometimes it just crashes. So make sure you make, your, make sure you save first. So, for the region map, for the center part, I'm going to switch to let's change the color to red and then let's hide the preview. This one is an old region map. Let me just let me just fill with red so we can Okay. So we're gonna start painting a new region map. So I'm going to choose a different color. Any color would do what to better to have a better visualization, I'm just going to use blue. So one side is blue and the other side is red. I'm going to paint one half of the character's head or um, scalp with the color blue. If you have used action, you probably have already used region maps before region map before so you know what I'm doing right now. But for those of you who are not familiar with XGen, region maps are just they assign a unique color to each area of the hair. So for example, this area is blue, one half of the hair is red so when I save this let me first save this region map okay let's also let me change the size of the brush to 0.1 then I don't want it to be a a straight line because if you look at the I mean, he's okay. I just don't want to don't want it to be a perfect uh, part, so I'm gonna add some imperfections in the middle, so we don't have a perfect center part. Do you have my voice and screen? Because sometimes I've had this problem that my voice would just go away in the middle of the stream. So if it happens, just let me know. Okay. We are going to save the region map. And then
you can see that left and right are somewhat separated but there are still some hairs that are still in the middle they don't know which way to go so i'm gonna tell you what the reason of for that is But aside from region map, we also have a region mask, which determines, uh, it's just a black and white map, which assigns different values from 0 to 1. So the black area is 0 and the white area is 1. It, uh, it assigns, uh, value from 0 to 1 to different areas of the head of the character's head so we already have painted a region map what I'm gonna do I'm going to exclude these outer areas from let me hide the preview let me also in brush settings you can also turn on symmetry in a stroke you can turn on reflection which is the same as symmetry and i'm going to set the opacity to 0.6 or 7 and increase the brush size to 2 and i'm going to paint black for the because I don't want the region map to be applied for the edges for the areas that are outside of this we only want uh, we only want the region map for this center part we don't want the region map to be applied to the entire surface so what I'm going to do I'm going to ex exclude these areas by painting black for the region mask. So again, we have a region map and a region mask. Region map is the color, colorful texture and region mask is just a black and white texture which determines which areas of the character's scalp is going to be affected by the region map. So we only want this area of the of the hair to be affected by by the region map. Okay, now let's um, save the region mask. If I update the preview, you can still see some hair in the middle that are not, that are not perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do, the reason for that is that I have added modifiers. I've added a bunch of clumping modifiers. When you add a region map, you also have to assign those same region maps for your clumping modifiers as well. So what I'm going to do for each clumping modifier, I'm going to one by one, you have to go to setup maps and then in use control maps, you have to make sure that the user control maps is enabled and you have to copy and paste the same address with the same expression that you have. Let me let me go back and show you. So we have with this um, address for region map, which is dollar sign description slash region map. And we have another expression for region mask. For the expression, you have to click on this sigma icon, and then you can you have to select all, then copy, and then go to your clumping modifiers setup maps use control maps 
and in control mask so basically control mask should be the same as region mask i'm gonna paste the same expression over here you can see that we have the exact same expression over here as well and then i'm going to um hit accept we have also the same link to the region map dollar sign description slash region map and then i'm going to save i'm going to do the same for so remember this is before doing this i'm going to do the same one by one for each of these clumping modifiers use control maps make sure the expressions are the same save use control maps save clumping number five control maps save clumping number six also save now look what happens when i update my preview look what happens you can see now we have a perfect center line that there is no uh, there is no hair in between there is no there are no hair strands that are confused in between every hair strand now has a perfect direction so now we are one step closer to our to our reference photo So I just wanted to show you how to use region map and how you can fix some of the problems that you might have with using region maps. So now that I have painted my region map, I'm going to I'm going to go back to sculpting guides and then just make everything. You can see that the hair length on the on the sides is way shorter compared to the compared to the top. So I'm going I'm using the scale to to decrease the length of those guards for the sides of the character's head. Hello, thank you for stream. Do you ever have a problem that the density map does not always grow hair on its smoothed border correctly? In some areas, there is not enough hair, especially often in the eyebrow area. Um, I'm not sure I get you. I'm not sure I understand. Um, so you mean... When you use a density map, what do you mean correctly? You mean, so when you smooth the border of a density map, then you're changing the intensity of the texture. So, I mean, you're you're basically changing the density by smoothing the borderline of that of that density map. So I don't understand what the problem exactly is. Maybe you can send me a screenshot. Can you send me a screenshot right now so I can understand what you exactly mean? <laughs> Okay, let's update the preview.
Yeah, sure. If you show me a screenshot, that would be that would be very helpful. How many people do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people. I'm also going to upload my stream tomorrow. Today's stream tomorrow. This my VOD channel. If you don't have this VOD channel, let me just link it to you. So I record and just upload the same stream tomorrow. If you can't watch right now, if you have more important things to do right now, you can just watch this stream tomorrow. And I think we are ready for to start a new, you know, maybe to start a streams on a streaming on YouTube. Because obviously we don't have enough people here, so whenever I go live, I only have maybe less than 10 people watching, so maybe I should do my next, next stream on YouTube or on Twitch. What do you guys think? Where do you usually, where do you guys usually watch your streams? On YouTube, on Twitch. YouTube. Hmm, maybe I should do the next stream on YouTube. Yeah, everybody is saying YouTube, so... Okay guys, maybe... Tomorrow... I'll go live on YouTube. And by the way, um, my main channel is this one. This one is why is my VOD channel. My main channel is just YouTube slash my name. Let me also link that one to you. So just in case you don't have my YouTube channel. Yeah, here's my main channel. If I go live, I'll probably go live on my, on my main channel. Okay, I'm just trying to set the length for, for the guides correctly. You can see as we go closer to the hairline from each side, I'm decreasing the length of our guides. Also, as we go as we get closer to the top, we are having lengthier guys for the top. So this one is this area.
Okay, let's update the preview. If you guys have any questions, just shoot. So, the transition is getting closer to the reference. There's still a lot of work to do, but the transition is getting better. Let's also add some guards for oh. We don't have enough guides here, so let me... And let's make it shorter. So here, when you add in guides, you can see that the direction... The direction of the hair is towards uh, the back of the ear. So if you point this guide, it goes... Uh, on top and the back of the ear. So pay attention because I have seen some people when I, when they add guides here, they they make their direction to the um, to the bottom of the of the character's head. This is not correct. You have to have the direction to the back. So it shouldn't be downwards. But as we get closer to the ear, if I zoom in in this um, reference, you can see as we get closer to the ear, uh, it gets more downwards. You can see here it's pointed to the back of the head. But as we get closer to the uh, to the ear, it gets more downwards. So that's something that. Some beginners don't really pay attention, pay attention to. We have been live for about half an hour, so for those of you who are new to the stream, we're working with XGen today. It's a personal work. I'm just trying to finish it by probably the end of the week. Maybe by the end of the weekend. And I hope to post it on, on Instagram by Monday. I hope to, I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish it by that time, but I'm just trying. I'm mostly done with the, with the likeness. I know how many of you are familiar with Franz Kafka, but I mean, here's the guy. Most of the references were... Let me show you some of the references. So, I think this one is probably the highest quality reference photo that I had. It's from 1923. Most of the reference photos are just very low quality. And here's one when he was younger. So when you have a character with not so many resources or that many references, it makes it really, it makes it more time consuming and more challenging to, to capture the likeness, to capture the hair, everything.
Okay, let's update the preview. Let's save. Before updating your preview, always save. I mean, when, you, when you're working with XGen, when you're working with Maya, not even just XGen, when you're working with Maya, just your fingers should be just on control S constantly. Any moment, it might just crash for no reason. So guys, is the frame rate okay? Is a a screen quality? Is everything clear when you're watching the stream? You can see the icons. You can see all the text. You know, readable. Because I want to make sure before going live on YouTube, I just want to make sure that. Everything is just working smoothly. I have... Seriously. That's what you have from... Hmm. Interesting. So let me check to see. Let me see if I can make it better. Okay, it's better. Okay, so I forgot to I forgot to change the video quality. Yeah, I mean. In the screenshot that you have sent, I think it's mostly just readable. So, all right, let's continue. Now that we can see what's going on, we are. trying to change the shape of these guides to be more in somewhat the same direction. If it's not readable, you can just watch the recorded tutorial, a recorded stream tomorrow on on the YouTube channel with with better quality. Maybe it's just my internet connection. I'm I'm not sure.
Okay, let's update the preview to see what's going on. Okay, I hope the quality is better now. All right. Um, let's just spend some time working on the back of the head. Some of the guys are too long, so I'm just going to make decrease the length of those guards and so I'm trying to have a better transition to between the top of the hair, the areas on side, which are shorter in length. Trying to have a smooth ex uh, a smoother transition between the two different sections. This card is, for example, way too long. Okay, save, update, preview. Okay, we, we're almost getting there. Yeah, let's just continue. This one is also way too long. Or maybe I'm just going to delete this one. And then... Make this one a little bit shorter. Also, the back of the hair should be just roughly the same size, same length as the top, maybe a little bit shorter as we get closer to the, as we get closer to the neck. Guys, if you have any questions, just type it in the chat box. Or if anybody want to join with a microphone, no problem. You can just, if you have a mic, you can just use it to join and ask me any question you want. Let's also delete this one. So... And also delete this one. Make these two a little bit shorter. Uh, 
a little bit shorter also this two these two need to be roughly the same size Okay, I think we have the sizes as we want them. Maybe it, now it's time to start adding new guides. All right, here, for example, you can see there is no uh, distinction between those two areas. So we can update the region map to also include this area, this area, or we can just keep adding new guides. Let's let me just add new guide here to see. Okay, what I'm trying to do, just like the reference photo, I'm just trying to have this kind of um, isolated section for the hair to be to be separated from the rest. So. Maybe I should update my region map for that. Is the screen quality better right now? Is it okay? You can can you see everything going on? Or is it just the same as it was? I think most of it is just my internet connection. I should just look for a better internet provider. I don't think I don't think I can do much from from my side at least. It's same, but I don't have a problem with it. Everything clear. I'll upload it with a much better quality tomorrow on YouTube. So no problem with that. I was just hoping to, you know, to have a better interaction to Yeah, it seems like that. There's just not much I can do.
Okay, let's update the preview. I think I'm just gonna wrap up this this stream maybe I'm gonna look I'm gonna go look for some solutions to see if I can fix the quality problem for for the next stream but for now I don't think there's much I can do so if you guys don't have any questions Maybe we can wrap up for today and we can come back tomorrow with or another day. With a better stream, hopefully. Yeah guys, so this is as far as I'm gonna go for today. If you don't if you guys don't have any questions, I'm just gonna wrap up. I really like the brush you use to make pose in the NVIDIA stream. I want more videos on a sculpting and texturing. Um then uh, a video tutorial wasn't a stream, it was uh, recorded, but the brush I used for, if I remember correctly, I think it was, it was a custom brush. Let me see if I can. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was a custom brush that I used to add those skin pores one by one. Let me show you on a model. You're in this brush, right? This single pole brush. You in this brush? Hello, Adele. You're almost wrapping up. You're too late to stream, Adele. Yeah, this is the brush that I think I showed you how to make this brush in that NVIDIA course, didn't I? So what was your question? I want more videos on sculpting and texturing. So I thought maybe your question was how I made this brush. So your question is how uh, to use this brush or how to make this brush. Because I remember that I showed you in that um, NVIDIA video tutorial how to how to make this make this brush from scratch. Yeah. So... And this takes hours to just cover the whole face. This is not an easy brush to use. also have this one that I showed you before. This one is just for wrinkles. I use this, cu another custom brush to use, that I use for wrinkles. Therapophobia has entered the circle, yeah.
it's not really for me. I mean, I have trypophobia, but this doesn't do it for me. This really doesn't bother me. So, I also have another Singapore that is a little bit smoother. For example, for the nose. Uh, yeah, for kind of more for the nose, for the some areas around the forehead. I use that one. Also have also have different nose br noise brushes. Sorry, these are custom noise brushes. It's just nothing special. It's a combination of color spray and just an alpha, I think alpha 7 or 8. That was, here's another one, to add noise to the surface. This is more, more of a directional noise that I use for, for example, for the forehead, if I want to a directional imperfection to the surface. And that's that. So guys, if you don't have any questions, please make some notification when you have next stream. I notified everyone. Yeah, I sent a notification to everyone that now I'm live. Huh. No, yeah. I don't know how else I'm going to send notifications. Is there any more efficient way to send notifications on Discord? Yeah. Okay, have a great day. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. And I'm just going to end the stream. See you next time. Bye.